The Valkyria Chronicles series is now four games in on six different platforms and over 10 years old. It's really stuck in my mind as this unique strategy experience that can't really be compared to anything else, but not all games are created equal. So if you're new to the series or just want your opinion validated by some random on the internet, then this is the video for you. Let's go through the series and put them in order from worst to best. And for the sake of saving both your time and mine, I'm just going to skip over Revolution. I would really like to simply list which game is better than the other, but I just don't think that's possible. This is sort of an eclectic series and each game in the franchise is quite different from one another. So to simplify things, I'm going to separate the criteria between story and gameplay. Let me just say that this is my attempt to be as objective as possible. Okay, let's start off with gameplay. Yes, we're starting off controversial and I'm putting the first game as bottom in the series in terms of gameplay. While it does most definitely have some really wonderful levels to play, it also has a few levels that are frankly shithouse. It's ultimately an easy, exploitable, unbalanced mess. Combine that with some really basic classes and weapons, it can feel overly simplistic. There is just too much which is broken here. It's as simple as that. Now this game can be criminally easy, but this is a game where there is constantly a lot to do and a lot of choice in how you want to do it. Unlocking classes, unlocking weapons, unlocking character missions and experimenting with resources, there is just so much to do. Combined with all the fluidity in how you approach classes, weapons and tanks, makes this still an exciting game to play. While it can be a bit too easy, there's still challenge, especially in the great amount of post-game content. Gathering resources for weapons can be a royal pain, and this game does have the most frustrating mechanic of the series, being the credit system for leveling classes. So why put this over the first game? When both of these games get difficult is when the dust settles for me. You just have so many options and specialized units and weapons to approach battles with in Valkyria Chronicles 2. While in the first game you are stuck with some fairly cookie cutter classes and some poorly balanced weapons. Don't get me wrong, the first game is still a lot of fun to play, but I feel comfortable putting Valkyria Chronicles 2 in this slot. The most challenging and balanced game in the series. If that's the case though, then why is it here and not number one? Well, it's all the other choices they made for the worst in this game that really hold it back from being truly great. The small character pool, all classes having the same potentials, meaning every character becomes more generic, the pointless class change system, ace weapons are now massively overpowered, and the weird changes to the R&D system. The biggest thing I take away from this game in terms of negatives is the lack of choice and specialization you can create with your units. So while it is the most challenging and balanced, there isn't much room for your personal choice, which is just straight up unfun. It also is the one that plays the most familiar on replay since there isn't much room for deviation in how you approach the game. While not as challenging and balanced as Valkyria Chronicles 3, it holds some of the greatest strengths of all the previous games, as well as its own new personal strengths. The maps here don't just match the first games, they're like double the size here. They make for some really impressive maps to play on and require their own distinct approach. The new class here is both fun to use and make for tough enemies. Lots of little elements from the PSP releases have been incorporated for a more balanced, specialized and pleasant experience. And I think this makes an easy pick for second toughest in the series. You have to be more careful in your approach and levels are mixed up much more often than any other game in the series. R&D is still a bit weak, classes are still on the basic side, and it holds a lot of the imbalances and exploits that the first game had. But in a lot of ways, this is the game that has almost the best of everything in the previous games. If it took a few more cues from the PSP releases, then I'd be more sure of its number one slot. Okay, so that's gameplay. So how about worst to best for story? Let me get this right off the bat and say that every release struggles with tonal issues and is confused with what audience it is exactly going for. That single statement applies to every game in this series, but getting into which ones are worst to best, I feel a little sad putting Valkyria Chronicles 2 in at the worst slot for story, but it's an undeniable truth. It has some good story moments here and there, but it's ultimately tonally confused with how to balance its serious subject matter with its fun tone, as well as having some lame twists along the way. 
It's also carried on the shoulders of some fairly two-dimensional protagonists, which is in a lot of ways the real crime of this game. I'll be straight though, some of the silly stuff in the story is fun, especially when it involves your squad members, but even then it can go too far sometimes. My point is even though it's bottom, it's still fun and enjoyable. I'm not an anti-fun pro serious person. If it had stuck to a consistent tone and didn't go too stupid, then I would have put it higher on the list. Yes, Valkyrie Chronicles 4 lands here mainly for one big reason, that reason being that it's bloated and boring. While Valkyrie Chronicles 2 is a long game, maybe even longer than Valkyrie Chronicles 4, it's not a very cutscene heavy game and most of its length comes from gameplay. Valkyrie Chronicles 4 conversely is a very cutscene heavy game, but it's a cutscene heavy game with not much going on, with characters or plot. As I say in my review, it's just a really dry experience. It does ramp up near the end and I do think that Valkyrie Chronicles 4 has some of the best scenes of the series, but this is a bloated story filled with a lot of nothing. I was fairly tempted to put Valkyrie Chronicles 2 above this game, now that's a claim. Because at least in Valkyrie Chronicles 2, the story is either out of the way or simple fun. In Valkyrie Chronicles 2, we also have a better idea of both the protagonists and antagonists motivations too, which is something that Valkyrie Chronicles 4 struggles with. The worst thing a story can ever be is boring, but this is a game that has got some great scenes and some edge of your seat moments. Keyword being some though. So Valkyrie Chronicles 4 earns this spot just barely. Speaking of bloated stories, we have Valkyria Chronicles 3. Now this is a game with a lot of unique ideas. How it handles them is somewhat subject to debate, I think. Like 4, this is a very cutscene heavy game, but it also has a very messy story. This is a game that is unnecessarily dependent on previous games in the series, with lots of reused characters or plot elements and concepts. Despite its assurance that it is a serious game for serious people, it can get overly silly at points. But it is a game with unique ideas, some of which might be solely exclusive to it across the entire field of video games, which is something that isn't easy to achieve. Those ideas are unique enough to where it will definitely hold your attention throughout the lengthy experience. But it is a messy story. Better messy than boring, I'll give it that. I'm sure whatever you think of the story, it will firmly stick in your mind, which is something that most media isn't able to accomplish. While in a lot of ways it is the least complex of all the entries in the series, I would say it is the strongest overall. It's not complexity that makes a story work and sometimes too much complexity actually harms the quality of a story. Valkyrie Chronicles aimed to be this very classic storybook-like adventure with a more contemporary backdrop of World War II as opposed to outright fantasy. An interesting idea and I think one that it achieves relatively well. It doesn't try to concern itself with having a really long RPG length story and it doesn't try to pad its length. Straightforward, not bloated and carried on the shoulders of a mostly solid cast of protagonists. This was a game with years of thought and design put into it and I think that really shows through. In many ways it is somewhat simple even by video game standards but it's just so full of details and great design that just polish it to this really memorable experience. You might say that nostalgia is clouding my judgement but I just made the declaration that this is the worst playing game in the series. So I think my mind is relatively clear on this one. It's just a game that feels very classic in style and in approach, which is something that is a really rare item these days. So there you have it. Worst to best in both gameplay and story. Even though I said I was trying to go for as objective a list as possible, I still think that you could create a solid argument for any game in the series as the best. They're all reasonably different from each other in every way, and I think that's a good accomplishment for a series. If you want what I personally think, then here. And this is combining my overall story and gameplay preferences. So even my subjective preferences doesn't quite adhere to what is my objective list. So if you're a newcomer and you have some time, I would honestly say play all of them and see which one you think is the best. And if you want a little more detail on how I feel about the games, then be sure to check out my reviews where I go more in depth.